Well, if you thought your dating life was bad, wait till you check out Sebastian Stan in Fresh, and thank God the role didn't go to Army Hammer. Oh boy. Army Hammer, 12 o'clock. I don't know about you guys, but up here in Canada, this movie about love and cannibalism released on Disney+, Plus, and it brings a whole new meaning to the phrase family meal. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Fresh, its hidden meaning, and some of the cool details you may have missed along the way. And stay tuned near the end of the video, where I'll be going over some crazy theories on who Steve's wife really is. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So grab your favorite snack, and make sure to like and subscribe, because we're about to sink our teeth into this fresh new horror. Horror. Meet Noah, a 20-somethings woman who has about as much luck finding love as I do. Stephanie, please take me back. Not only does Chad here not pay for the meal, he's rude to the waitress, takes Noah's leftovers, and... Her scarf is dipping into the noodles. Not to mention he criticizes her for not wearing a dress. And when he asks her out for a second date and she declines, he morphs into a total douchebag. Good luck finding a guy, you stuck-up bitch. That's Noah's problem. She can't seem to find a nice guy. And that's one of the things I liked about the first quarter of this movie. Instead of telling us how bad her love life is, we actually get to see it. Then when she eventually meets Mr. Too Good To Be True, Steve over here, there's something to compare it to. And the two meet, ironically enough, in the fresh vegetable section of the local supermarket. It's an awkward but funny and kinda charming meet cute where Steve's able to get her number. She tells her friend Molly that she didn't believe people actually met in real life anymore. Dating nowadays seems to be relocated to superficial online apps. The one in this movie is called Puzzle Piece, since Noah is missing that one piece of her life that she thinks will make her complete. You could also argue that this whole film is an allegory for modern dating today, one in which we are simply pieces of meat to be tossed aside. Steve and Noah's first date goes remarkably well. He's a plastic surgeon and the two have a lot in common. I hope we have something in common, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Dead parents. That's actually an important point, as we'll find find out later, Steve only collects women with little to no friends or family. It decreases the chance someone will come looking for the girls he captures. And things take off rather fast with the two. They flirt, dance, order takeout, and yes, have sex. Get that D! But there are also a few red flags. Steve doesn't have any social media, he's pretty much impossible to find online, and his name is Steve. But he wants to surprise her with a mini vacation to a secluded place in Cottage Grove, Oregon. What could go wrong? He ends up Bill Cosbying her drink, and it isn't until 33 minutes into the movie that we actually get the introductory credits. I actually like this. It was different and felt right, like this is where the movie really starts. Noah wakes up chained in a basement, understandably freaked the fuck out. But Steve isn't here to have his way with her. He just wants her for her delicious meat. I'm not gonna kill you. Uh, right away. Because the fresher the meat, the better. Yes, Steve is a sadistic psychopath who captures women and sells their meat, piece by piece, to affluent customers across the globe. Throughout the film, we'll see as he takes multiple victims, removes pieces of their body, stores them in a meat locker, cuts those pieces, and prepares vacuum-sealed delicacies for his clients. They even get a goodie bag filled with their personal effects and photos. It's a pretty lucrative business, and as Noah is soon to find out, she's not the only one there. In a cell beside her is a woman named Penny. We're not sure how long Penny has been here, but as we'll find out later, she's already had her leg removed. Steve likes to take pieces of these women in chunks, keeping them alive to preserve the freshness. Next to Penny is a woman we never see, except in this photo here, Melissa. It's likely she's been here longer than Penny. She's gone mad and spends most of the film blabbering nonsense. Meanwhile, Molly's concerned for her friend, finding out that a picture sent from Noah's phone could easily be reverse image searched. This takes her on a quest to find out more about the mysterious man Noah has fallen for, asking her bartender friend Paul for the name of the man who took Noah out to his bar a few nights earlier. She makes a shocking discovery when it's found out Steve is married with kids. Back at the meat dungeon, Noah asks Steve if she can take a shower, but really this is a sly opportunity to check the surroundings outside her cell. This is something we'll see her do throughout the movie. She's always looking for ways to escape. She'll sket out the windows, clock the knives, and even discover the dumbwaiter which will be used later. Noah tries to escape, but is easily subdued by her captor, and when she awakes she finds out Steve has removed the first part of her body, her ass. I'm not entirely sure how that works, and frankly I'm a bit too afraid to google it. As she recovers, Noah finds out that none of the other girls have slept with Steve, at least none that we know of, and in one of the magazines she's given, one of the former captives has left a message. If you're reading this, it means he likes you. Use it. 
keep fighting. We'll later find the woman who wrote this message as part of Steve's trophy wall, where he keeps mementos of all his kills. Through her friend Paul, Molly gets the name of the guy who went out with Noah and is able to find his wife's Facebook profile. So Molly does what any good friend would do and show up at her doorstep to expose him as a cheater. Remember at this point, Molly doesn't know Noah's been kidnapped or that Steve is an insane cannibal. But when Steve, or should I say his real name, Brendan, says he has no idea who Noah is, it looks like Molly's reached a dead end. That is until she calls Noah's number and Steve conveniently has her phone on him. But the big shocker here is that the wife is in on the whole thing too, and she ends up knocking Molly out and becoming one of his captives. Noah starts to change her tactics in order to get on Steve's good side. She takes interest in Steve's profession, when he started, how he prepares the meals. This newfound interest spurs Steve to take her on a romantic dinner complete with human meatball, a meal which she'll throw up as soon as she gets back to her cell, a meal which Steve said would normally cost $30,000. We also get more insight into his character. He started eating human flesh at the age of 19 and couldn't stop thinking about it. He liked how it made him feel and soon found a small community of people who felt the same way he did. For Steve, there's nothing more beautiful in the world than someone surrendering themselves to another, giving yourself over to become one with another. Noah finds that this tactic pays off and soon Steve has invited her to a special dinner and even gets her a pink dress. Of course, it's pink in a movie about flesh. This is a full course meal, including liver pate and breast. We know the liver comes from Melissa, the other captive woman who went crazy, but it's hinted that the breast is actually Molly's. The night before, Steve performs surgery on her. He tells Noah that it might, quote, taste familiar, and there are a few moments we see Molly clutch her chest in pain. You saved the breast to last. But it's not all fun and games for Noah. She's here to manipulate Steve in order to survive, breaking down and telling him that she feels awful because eating another person doesn't make her feel awful. She should be feeling bad, but she doesn't. It's a sly tactic to make Steve empathize with her, and it works. You're just different. And I knew it from the moment I met you. This complements his line earlier in which he says, you know how I knew you were special? Because you're fucked up too. At the end of the dinner, when they've had such a great time, he tells her he forgot to handcuff her, and she says she forgot too. This is yet another way she's telegraphing her trust to him, that she's so into him she forgot she was captive. This allows him to open up to her and show her his trophy case of past victims, and when she asks where her stuff is, he tells her he keeps it to himself. For Steve, Noah is special. She's not like the other girls, and that's exactly the angle Noah is trying to exploit. When the two get intimate, and you could see this moment coming a mile away, she bites his dick off. That's got to hurt. I don't care where you're from. But Noah's first instinct isn't to run the hell out of there, it's to save the other women. And Noah knows there's another way of escape. Remember how I said she was great at observing things? She knows there's a dumbwaiter they can use to get upstairs. Now Steve, having his dick bitten off, isn't all too pleased. So a royal rumble ensues in the kitchen with Steve getting his head bashed in with a meat mallet, allowing the girls to escape into the forest. Now I just gotta mention, there's this whole other side story where Paul uses GPS to track Molly's phone, but when he gets to the location and hears gunshots, he runs away and we never see him again. At first I was like, what was the point of this? But I think it's just the writer's way of saying F you to the cliche of the man coming in to save the day, but I digress. Meanwhile, Anne, whose husband hasn't been picking up her calls, makes her way to the cottage and finds the candlelit dinner and blood everywhere. She even finds her husband's wedding ring in the bedroom along with a collection of personal effects belonging to both him and Noah including Noah's driver's license. This is how she'll identify Noah as being the woman her husband has been cheating with. Steve pursues Noah, but the women tag team him, holding him at gunpoint on the ground, and Noah asks him to smile, something she was told to do by him throughout the movie. Now you think the movie would be over, but when Noah goes off on her own to find her phone, she's confronted by Anne posing as another one of Steve's captives. Remember, Noah doesn't know Anne is Steve's wife. Enraged knowing Noah was the woman who her husband was cheating with, she tries to kill her, but it's Molly who comes in and saves the day. The movie ends with Noah's phone receiving a text message from that guy from the beginning of the movie asking you up. It's a fun little sting, but I couldn't stop thinking about Anne. I actually found her the most intriguing character in the film. In one of the weirdest scenes, she pulls back the skin on her face, as if seeing what she'd look like with a facelift. 
Steve is a plastic surgeon and will later inspect her face, but it's just really weird. We then see her reveal her prosthetic leg. There's no real point in the story for her having a fake leg. The actress certainly doesn't have one, and it just costs more money for the VFX department to remove it, so why? What if Anne was a former captive of Steve's? Steve has been eating human flesh since he was 19. What if he fell in love with her just like he did with Noah and Sammy? We also see that Steve is able to cut off legs just like he did with Penny. What if he did the same to Anne, but during his love affair with her got her pregnant, and through some fucked up Stockholm Syndrome, the two built a life together, working together as a team. We saw how when Noah showed interest in his cannibalistic tendencies, how he beamed and wanted to bring her into his world. Is it too far-fetched in an already far-fetched movie to think there's some truth to this, or did I miss something entirely and I'm way off base? I want to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone, make sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, get that deep!